Right, power. It's a big talking point in the world of air, especially those that are chucking lead slugs down the range. Manufacturers keep releasing bits that give you more. Does it work? No, really, does it work? Or is it bunkum? Rubbish, flim flam, a whole bunch of <laughs> and barrel length. Does it actually make a difference? And what should you expect? Is longer really more powerful? Or are you getting a bunch of Rooney and Vardy? Calculators at the ready. I'm going to squash some myths, bury some conspiracies, and annoy many, many trolls with my results. Here we go. This video is made in association with Airgun 101 Shop the best place for the latest airgun gadgets and gizmos. Plus, with airgun101.com, the best place to see the latest airgun videos online from some of the world's best creators. So please go visit. Barrels, probes and blocks. FX leads the way with this stuff, but other manufacturers also tinker with barrel lengths. Why? And does it actually change the power of the rifle? Does adding a slug probe instead of a standard probe make any difference? And the slug port, does that do anything? What happens when you combine all this together? Does it give you more power? And if so, how much? Are the manufacturers just taking your money and it does nothing? Well, this is where my testing comes in. It's basic, but the results are, shall we say, Interesting. Now, I'm not a mathematician, don't claim to be, but I have given it a go. For my experiment, I have used a standard M3 and a power block M3, 22 cal, and both are set at 100 bar on the rear and 150 on the front, and that's factory set. On the side, the wheels are set at 16 and 4.5, with the valve adjuster being on line four. So both guns are both exactly the same in the same reg and wheel settings, or as near as I can get. All I'm going to do is add or twist stuff to change the setup. Now these changes are simple ones, ones that everyone can make without dismantling the gun. Well, kind of, you've got to just do a and do the odd screw. The only thing I'm going to change is the barrel length, the probe, and I'm going to rotate the barrel from the pellet port to the slug port. Nothing else. Now, I know I say nothing else, but they are fundamental small changes. I'm not taking it apart and putting hammer springs in and undoing valves and taking it. Okay, I'm not. This is stuff that you can do easily at home. This is going to be interesting for everyone, no matter what brand you shoot. This is about learning what works and what does not. And yes, I expect developers and other manufacturers to be watching and learning. I've been doing this for three weeks, getting it presentable. So here we go then. Firstly, three barrel lengths, 500, 600, and 700 which is on there and they're all smooth twist x liners and they're actually brand new i wanted them all exactly the same and i bought them with my own money to do this i'm using three types of ammo jsb 18.13452s patriot javelin 23217 and the zan projectiles 40 grain as 218 five shots with each ammo in each configuration and the results are recorded via the FX chronograph. And why that ammo? Well, it's a popular pellet and slug choice, light and heavy. So it's a balance across what's available. And that means you can repeat this yourself. The setup is openly available if you wish to purchase it. So let's get started. 500 mil barrel with pellet port and pellet probe five shots with each ammo type. Then I changed to a 600 mil barrel with pellet probe and pellet port and take five shots with each. And then I changed to the 700 barrel, pellet port and pellet probe, and I take five further shots. 
Then rotate the barrel from the pellet port to the slug port, keeping the pellet probe and do the same again. 500, then 600, then 700 barrel. Then change the pellet probe to the slug probe and stick with the slug port. And again, five shots, each with a 500, 600 and 700 barrel. Record each and every shot with information overload gradually beginning to take place in here. But already I can see that things do really change when you make these simple changes. And yes, I will show you the results, but I'm not finished yet. Next is over at the other range and a power block M3 setup with the settings mirrored from the earlier tests. It's a factory set rifle, no pre-tweaks or changes. And again, I start with a 500 mil barrel, pellet probe and pellet port, five shots of each and carry on 600 barrel, 700 barrel and changing from the pellet port to slug port and then adding in the slug probe. And at no point have I added a hammer weight or anything like that. Just to be clear, these are changes that you can easily make at home. <sighs> so what have we got? Well, it's actually a huge spreadsheet, 14 pages when I print it out to have a look at. And I will post it as a blog on the shop website so you can go and download the images from there. And the link is on screen now for that. But let's take a look at this information. Firstly, barrel length. Yeah, you know these. Does it make a difference? And the answer is, oh yes. With a non-power block, regular port and pellet probe, you can gain anything from 53 feet per second to 143.6 feet per second. And that's just by swapping from a 500 barrel to a 600 to a 700. So yes, barrel length gives you more speed and you need change nothing else on the rifle. Obviously that is ammo dependent, but the numbers just clearly speak for themselves. And these results are mirrored with the slug port and the pellet probe setup. And then the same with the slug port and the slug probe. It seems the increase in speed is consistent across the barrel length changes and the setup, which for me means that I have some nice consistent data. But to answer the big and final question, does barrel length increase your speed? Yes, it does. And the reasons for that are, in layman's terms, the air, or pressure is given greater time to work behind the ammo when it goes down the barrel. However, at some point it will diminish, but I've not seen that yet. So it's not gonna be a three meter barrel in the future, for example. The push of that air will also wear off at some time along the length of the barrel. So you could actually have a barrel that is too long, but does barrel length increase speed? Absolutely. What does changing from the pellet probe and the pellet port to the slug probe and the slug port do? Well, in the non-power block, you see an average of 23.91 feet per second increase. And in the power block version, that increases to 29.48 feet per second average. However, look at the results. Those are an average. Some jumps are in the 40 plus feet per second region just by turning and adding these two items. So apart from buying this, it's potential free power that the rifle can do and clearly does more with the power block. It's free power. And we could all do with that right now. Don't mention it to Greta. I'm sure they've got free power in Area 51, but let's not divert to that at the moment. Yes, there's more power there. Now, here is something interesting. With the power block version, the speed from the barrel increase in length is not as great. In fact, compared to a non-power block, it's down just on the barrel increase, okay? And I think that's down to how the power block vents down the barrel differently. Actually, overall, it's more powerful, but I'm guessing the power block is taking the work off the barrel increase. So basically, 
you don't need as much barrel when using a power block because the gain is less which in the end is a good thing because if you're going to take away the actual barrel length as a calculation the increase between the power block and the non-power block is greater so the power block is creating its own barrel extension sort of hypothetically and thus the gain from the barrel being longer is less which means a shorter barrel can give you more power science you see and that's interesting measuring the actual increase of the ammo speed from non-power block to power block the increase is actually approximately 13.75 feet per second average per shot increase with the addition of the power block some configurations are more than others and yes the odd decrease does show up but that could be the odd lower shot during testing and that power block likes to work harder the heavier the ammo the greater the increase so it's venting the air differently so if you're looking to shoot heavy slugs the power block actually likes to be challenged where can you gain the biggest increase easily well it's by changing from the pellet port and pellet probe to the slug port and slug probe alone again the heavier the ammo it seems the greater the gain the wish for smaller more compact rifles will clearly benefit from the slug port and slug probe setup with the power block the system works harder and thus allows greater speeds from a shorter rifle so if you're a manufacturer making small compact rifles the most efficient system is a slug size port with a slug probe and a large power block valve system. To conclude then, because I'm kind of mind blown, barrel length alone, it makes a huge difference depending on the setup behind it. Does a more efficient block make a difference? Yes, it does. The power block can override and reduce barrel length effect. Thus, a compact rifle needs all this to shoot slugs at speed because a slug probe and port and power block will help overcome that shorter barrel if you want to shoot heavy slugs you can do it using a regular probe and pellet port but if you want speed in a compact size the slug port and slug probe with a power block can give you an extra 46 feet per second average for no extra work on those regulators and talking of regulators these average numbers i would estimate will go up and up when you open up the regulators i've started on 150 at the front and 100 on the rear many many shooters open these up to much much more and that would give a much much more power all i've done is take a data sample does length and accessories make a difference yes they do so does buying all these bits make your gun more powerful yes it does if you're a competing manufacturer you can thank me next time you see me because I've just shown you how to do it or you could just buy an FX and not wait for those to catch up there's no free wood here just power one thing is clear if you're serious about getting into shooting slugs and want power that can be defined and upgraded over time, get something that is expandable, that you can make actual physical changes to. Don't get yourself landlocked. Because the speed that everything is going at at the moment, that's the only way forward. And this video is not about accuracy. It's about power and potential from a rifle accuracy well that's a whole different video but this is incredibly accurate and i'm not a competition winning shooter go take a look at my results dispute them please do tear them to pieces and self-proclaimed nuclear scientists i'm sure you will say my data is void why did you not do it with a different power setting what about 2, 5, and 30? Blah, 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 blah. Well, I just wanted proof of concept. 
the settings are what the settings are. No preset, nothing done to make things look good. So I challenge anyone out there who's a keyboard troll, you go away and spend three weeks, make your own video and post the link to it below and we can all have a look. You can put that in the comments below, it's there. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm happy with my results and my work here is done. And I'm gonna be blunt with you, social media has got to the point where you try and post things to be helpful and there's a lot of evil people out there that put things in comments. It's getting a little bit boring and it's getting a little bit old and I'm far better than those people. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope it's been educational. Even if you shoot powder other than air and even if you shoot a day state or an air arms or a VAR arc or anything like that, it's educational. You now have more knowledge and understanding about how this stuff works than before you started watching this video. So there we go. Please give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe and ring the bell and every now and again I make a video. Um, I'm afraid I can't just keep banging videos out of stuff that I don't find interesting. I like to do stuff that interests me nowadays. That's it. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.